You know when you're out shopping, looking for some cow's milk, and you see a carton that says dairy-free alternative to milk. So of course you presume it must be cow's milk because it says milk on the packaging. And then you get home and pour it into your tea only to find out it's not actually cow's milk. So then you send a strongly worded email to the European Union demanding that they ban plant-based companies from using these phrases because someone needs to put an end to this nonsense. After all, this isn't the first time this has happened. Wait, that hasn't happened to you either? And yet right now, all around the world, the animal farming industries are working with politicians to try and get certain terms banned from being able to be used by plant-based companies with the EU considering a piece of legislation that could make it illegal to use phrases that imitate or evoke dairy products. This could make it illegal to even say, does not contain milk. I'm not even joking, but believe me, I really wish I was. But this has got me thinking about the words the meat, dairy and egg industries use and how they hide behind euphemisms to disguise the reality of their industries. So here's my roundup of the words the EU and other politicians should be looking to ban if, that is, they do actually care about consumer confusion. Now if I said to you, what word would you use to describe hanging an animal up on a kill line and pulling a knife across their throat, what would you say? Well, if you were a farmer, you would call that processing. You see, the animal exploitation industries have a real problem saying that water is wet. In fact, in 2019, at their annual conference, New South Wales farmers voted for the complete exclusion of the word slaughter and for it to be replaced with the word processing. Why, you might ask? Well, because in their view, the word slaughter is used to create emotions that discredit animal farming industries and undermine trust in animal farming. One farmer stated, The word slaughter is not appropriate for our industry. It's not a mass murder. Sure, whatever helps you sleep at night. But this is a common term used by animal farmers, with slaughterhouses often referred to as meat processing plants. Avoiding the word slaughter seeks to detach the consumer from the reality of what happens to animals by instead using words that allow us to psychologically distance ourselves from what we are paying for. After all, would you rather pay for an animal to be processed or slaughtered? At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, many slaughterhouses were forced to close due to outbreaks among the workers. One of the most notable was the Smithfield Slaughterhouse that supplies around 5% of all pig flesh in the US. This caused huge problems in the supply chain. So the next question is, what do you call killing hundreds, even thousands of lives in quick succession because you can't sell them to have their throats cut? The farmers would call this depopulation. But in reality, depopulation is just a friendlier way of saying on-farm mass extermination. Some of the ways that animals are slaughtered en masse on farms includes ventilation shutdown, where the air supply is cut off to the barns filled with animals. This in turn causes the heat to increase to intense levels, causing the animals to slowly suffocate and roast to death at the same time. This method of mass murder is even endorsed by the American Veterinary Medical Association, whilst at the same time, they call it unacceptable to leave dogs in cars. Why? Because the temperature will increase, which will cause the dogs to suffer and die. After the process of ventilation shutdown was exposed by hidden camera footage, the National Pork Producers Council said in an email, we definitely need to come up with a new name to describe this. Other methods of on-farm mass slaughter include pumping foam throughout the barns, blocking the airways of the animals, causing them to suffocate to death, and also using carbon dioxide, where the farmers turn the barns into large gas chambers, or create smaller gas chambers, in which the animals are gassed to death. Next word. What do you call the act of picking up a piglet by their back legs and slamming them against a wall or the floor to kill them because they're not growing fast enough or aren't worth spending money on for veterinary care? Farmers call this euthanasia. But when we think of animals being euthanized, we think of our companion animals being peacefully killed because they are severely ill. Well, farmers will describe killing an animal on their farm as euthanizing the animal, except instead of being done in the animal's best interest, it is done in the farmer's financial interest. The most common methods of killing birds on a farm include blunt force trauma, which involves hitting an animal over the head until they are dead. There is also neck dislocation, carbon dioxide gassing either head only or in gas chambers, or a captive bolt. For mammals, the most common methods include captive bolts, 
blunt force trauma, gassing, electrocution, or a bullet. But the issue of euphemisms is even more normalized than this, to the point where some of the most common words used to describe animal exploitation actually contribute to the objectification of animals. For example, the term livestock. By referring to animals as livestock, animal farmers are attempting to create a distinction between the animals they farm and the animals that exist in the world. It essentially otherizes the animals we exploit and attempts to put them into a different classification which further perpetuates the idea that these animals are acceptable to exploit and kill. For example, if you ask someone, is it acceptable to kill livestock? Most people will say yes. But if you ask, is it acceptable to kill animals? People's responses would often be very different even though the question is the same question. Besides morally, there is no difference between killing a pig or killing any other animal we don't classify as livestock. This is how othering works. We view the animals we kill as being different and refer to them differently so as to make what we do to them more palatable and less likely to expose our cognitive dissonance. And by using the word livestock, we are viewing these animals as mere products, commodities who can be traded and profited off of. In essence, it seeks to deny the animals their individuality. And what about the names of animal products themselves, many of which are also named and referred to in a way that disconnects us from the reality of who we are eating? And even though the origins of many of these words can be traced back hundreds of years, referring to animal flesh as meat, pig flesh as pork, cow flesh as beef, and baby cow flesh as veal, among others, further detaches us from having to think about the animals whose bodies we are purchasing. Imagine if supermarkets had flesh aisles rather than meat aisles, or if instead of bacon, we bought sliced pig flesh. By turning animals into objects, classifying them differently, and using different words to describe them when they are living and then when they are dead, it allows us to avoid the discomfort of thinking of them in gas chambers or hung up on the kill line about to have their throats cut. Whether we realize it or not, the animal agriculture industries have been purposefully trying to trick consumers for years, and their ongoing attempts to try and censor plant-based companies further prove how worried they are about the prospect of informed consumers making their own decisions. In the end, consumers aren't being misguided by clearly labeled plant-based alternatives. They are being lied to and deceived by industries that are desperate to keep the objective reality of what happens to animals out of sight and out of mind.